Hey Nathan here, welcome back to another tutorial that covers mono game. And in this video I'm going to discuss a very quick concept on how to add audio to your game. And there's going to be a couple more audio tutorials later on, but this is just to get you started with. So I have an audio file, how do I add that to my game? It's very simple, just like adding a PNG or a texture to your game. Just be doing the same thing. So I'm using a WAV format. You can use MP3. I'm using WAV because there's no limitations on licensing if you use MP3. I've read that you have to license that if you distribute your game for more than 5,000 copies. You're going to have to apply for licensing. So I've decided to use WAV. These two files that I will add here. I will give them to you. They're from my tower defense game. The music is a very repetitive track. I have lowered the quality a lot and I set it to mono, not stereo. The track alone, the raw recording that I made was about 20 to 40 megabytes. I didn't want to distribute that and have you download that big file, so I lowered the quality and I set it to mono, so it's now like 2.5 megabytes. So before we get started on the code, I'm going to just show you what this sounds like. So that's about a minute and it, you know, it changes a little bit towards the middle and then it repeats. It's supposed to be a song that's playing during the menu. And then that's for the music. Now for the sound effect that we're going to use is a strong hit and that's from the My Tower Defense game as well. So that will be played whenever you hit the space bar. Now, this is what you see on the screen is a new project I just created. No reference to any of the previous projects. Just a fresh blank game for mono game. I'm not going to do any checking to see if you've already pressed the space key if it's already held. So if you hold down the space key, it's just going to fire off that sound repeatedly. So if you hold down the space key, you'll hear that sound just repeatedly being fired. I'm not going to do any check based on that. All right, I'm going to load those into my content project. Let me bring this over here. So this is the content project for this audio tutorial. I'm just going to right click this content here and go to add existing item. Now I'm going to browse to where those files are, my completed sample, and I'm just going to copy those files there. Now I'm going to copy the file to the directory. Yeah, that's fine. And then, okay. So now one thing to keep in mind, and this, this got me too when I was first developing the sample. I have the strong hit, that is this sound. This is the song. The menu underscore low is the song. If you look there, if I hover over menu underscore low, look at the bottom where the properties are. Look at where it has a processor. This is not a sound effect, it's a song. So set that to song. And now if I like to set the quality to low, this is just for a tutorial. Use your best judgment as you're producing your game if you want the quality to be higher. These are WAV files. Uh, to download those, there will be a link in the under the video in the description and on the site. So I'm going to set those to the song to low, the sound effect to best. Yeah, that's fine. All right. So I'm going to save that and build that. 
Okay, so now let's go into the coding. Our content portion is done, so let's go into the coding here. All right, I'm gonna make a a song that is a type of song. I'm gonna call this underscore song. So I'm gonna make an object of that. Uh, you'll need to add Microsoft at Framework Media to add that. So I'm just going to make another private field here for sound effect. I'm going to call that underscore sound. So underscore song will be the song and underscore sound will be the sound effect. And then just like anything, a texture or a sprite font, whenever we have our content to load, it goes into low content here. So underscore song is equal to content dot load. It's going to be type of song and just pass in the name of the asset menu underscore low. All right. Now I'm going to start playing that immediately and you use that through the media player. All right. I'm going to set the volume to 100%, which is just 1.0 or I'm sorry. I'm going to set that to 50% which is 0.5F. And then I'm going to set that to repeat, which is just the is repeating property. I'm going to set that to true, and now we'll just start playing that. Media player dot play. That's the method you want to call. Underscore song. So I'm playing the underscore song field, which we loaded here. All right, now I'm going to load the sound. Underscore sound is equal to content dot load. It's going to be type sound effect. Pass in the asset name, which is just strong hit. So strong hit. And we don't do anything yet. Whenever we do our specified condition, in this case, whenever I hit the space key, Whenever that specified condition is met, we will fire that sound effect. So let's go to the update method and do that. All right, like I said, I'm not going to bother checking to see if the space bar is already held. If it's, you know, if it's a new key press, I will fire off the sound effect. Otherwise, I will not. I'm not going to do any of that checking in this video. So if keyboard dot get state dot is key down keys dot space so if we have pressed our space bar on our keyboard underscore sound dot play you can pass in a few parameters like the volume but I'm just gonna call dot play and that's it now we press F5 now when we run it, it should load our song and start playing immediately. And whenever we hit the space bar, we should hear our sound effect. All right, so this is the completed code. I already finished the tutorial, but uh, as I was in the middle of presenting the part that I'm about to redo, I noticed my OBS was going crazy with the audio that was being presented by the game. So I'm redoing this part. All right, so I'm going to run this code and you'll hear the sound or the song playing. And I'm going to hit the space bar a few times and you'll hear the sound effect firing. All right, so I hit the space bar three times. So you can control the volume of the song and any of the other properties you can find in the media player class. And then when you actually want to play the song, you just call the dot play method there. Uh, the sound effect, if you look at the actual, when you call it, dot play, you can see you can pass in volume, pitch, and pan. 
So in a future video, I'm going to discuss how to change the volume, pitch, and pan depending on where your where the object's position is. Now there's also a technique that you can use 3D positioning for the audio, which I will not get into. I'm just going to use the the play call here, and we'll pass in a different volume and a different pitch and a different pan depending on where that object is. Because an object far away will be much quiet than an object close to the other object. Just like if I get farther away from the microphone, you'll hear my voice get, get more quiet than if I'm close to the microphone. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it gave you a good start on how to have audio and music in your game. Stay tuned for the next video, which will cover the collision detection of a sprite sheet. Alright, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.